This is exactly right. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hi. Welcome. To my favorite murder. The mini so The mini so So day. Uh, this is where you tell us, number one, your hometown murder is great. And then from there, it's just, you know. The floor is yours. It's, it's just as your special moment to stand up. Put, to speak out. Say hello to everyone. And be like, here's the most interesting thing I can dig up. <laughs> yeah. Whether it be in your town, in your family. It might not be your story. It's okay. Who cares? Tell us other people's stories. Think these are our fucking stories? <laughs> They're not. <laughs> okay. <go. laughs> the subject line of this first email is the mysterious death of Grandpa Vestal. Mm. Dear MFM family. Recently, I was visiting with my parents in Sacramento, eating breakfast downtown, where we watched a car drive the wrong way down a two-way street. My mom, who is well aware that her son is a murderino, and who saw me watching Unsolved Mysteries on cable literally the day before, turned to me and casually asked, well, you know about Grandpa Vestal, right? <gasps> my mom then told me about the mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of my completely normally named Great Grandpa Vestal. Yeah, that's just there. That I mm, Questions. Okay, go on. Uh, it's He already sounds like a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> It it's was all born a ghost. The vet, the name Vestal is like, oh, you are cursed and will be haunting the rest of your family. Absolutely. Okay. In 1986, my uncle got a late night call asking him if he knew Vestal since he was in the phone book and shared the last name. My uncle confirmed that it was his dad. And the police let him know that Vestal had been killed in a highway collision. Oh, no. Vestal was 80 years old, and at the time, he lived in Dixon, which is a rural town about 20 miles away from Sacramento. You know it? Yes, of course. Dixon's the town on the way to, from my town to oh. Sacramento, and, like, I had friends that lived there and okay. stuff. Um, they had a, I think they had a really good f- fall fair. Oh, from what I remember. Lovely. Um, it's a real corn maze part of the country. <laughs> corn maze based. Okay, so, uh, uh, we talked about Dixon. Okay, he lived by himself since his wife had passed away some years prior, and according to my mom, had no dementia or any other mental health issues to speak of. So none of us will ever know what prompted mm-hmm. Vestal, who didn't drive at night and who didn't leave Dixon, mm-hmm. to get behind the wheel of his car, drive down the I-5, transfer onto the 180... Uh, towards the Sacramento airport, drive the wa- wrong way down the freeway and crash head on into another car, killing himself and his, the other car's passengers. Oh my God. My favorite eerie detail was that when they checked his house afterwards, they found his dinner uneaten left on the ottoman in his usual spot. Stay sexy and just stay in for the night and finish your dinner. <laughs> Cody. Co- Cody, <laughs> like from the last episode that we yes. just recorded. Yes. It's a, it's the celebrity named Cody telling the creepiest fucking story. I want to cry. It's horrible. I want to scream or cry. But it's like he just he made himself or got himself a full dinner. Why did he do that? Then stood up, left, and went and did something he would normally never do. He must have had, I wonder if he had like a stroke and and something else was going on in his brain. Where Because I bet you he fucking drove those freeways his like forever. It's not like he didn't know how to get on that on ramp onto that. You know what I mean? Yes. Like something's wrong there too. Yes, exactly. Like, why would you go the wrong? Remember when Nicole Richie went the wrong way down the 134? Yeah. It was in the middle. That's one of my favorite stories. Gotta be ambient. Uh, Well, yeah. Or like just being fucked up because it was before she got sober. Yeah. I think. And, um, it was like she basically got on an on ramp, on ramp, and then took a left oh, onto an empty freeway, and then realized it was oh, <laughs> wrong direction. That's like a big. I mean, everyone's watched What's Wrong with Aunt Diane or What's yes. the Matter with Aunt Diane. That movie fucked me up. Well, because yeah, it's like was this? I mean, you immediately picture that Grandpa Vestal was like possessed or some maybe crazy he shit. hadn't been sleeping well lately and so it was just exhaust you know what i mean like your brain does crazy shit when you're exhausted M- yeah, we have maybe qu- cody we have so many questions cody call 555 a piece of bread that yes. had mold on it that made him hallucinate yes which is the way it used to happen in the dark ages that's right meaning like 100 years ago okay <laughs> at the turn of the century right okay 
<laughs> this is this one's called everyone is cremated equally question mark Mm-mm. hi y'all it's your friendly neighborhood mortician here I, <laughs> oh by the way we're doing these are all uh sacramento san francisco like bay area oakland, yeah. oakland uh because we're doing live shows this coming weekend there yep hi, hi. um it's your friendly neighborhood mortician here. I worked for a place that did all the preparations and cremations for several funeral homes. And we worked with one lady who ran what we call a cremation society, <laughs> basically a business that just offers direct cremations for decent prices for families. So one day she receives a call from this guy that his mother had passed away on hospice at home and we needed to come pick her up. Nothing unusual. We get these calls all the time. Usually if, uh, usually if they're on hospice, the nurse and doctor have been notified of the death and the funeral comes the funeral home comes and picks them up next day the son comes into the funeral home no call no appointment just comes in and starts asking the funeral director about the paperwork she said she got a weird feeling from him and he was uh, antsy and sweaty and just quick to sign the paperwork and uh, without asking any questions Mm. after signing all the paperwork he leaves quickly so the funeral director starts filing all the necessary paperwork for the permits and death certificate a few days later she receives a call from the coroner stating that they need to pick up the body to do an investigation because her death was never was never reported to the hospice or the authorities. Oh, she tries contacting the son to let him know. Every number he gave her didn't work and wasn't uh, and he wasn't at the address he gave her either because and then this is all caps. Guess what? What? Bastard, bastard skipped town because he killed his mother Ugh. and thought that uh, trying to speed up the cremation process would cover his tracks. Well, it didn't. Authorities eventually tracked him down in Nevada and his mother's cremains were given to the next of kin. So fuck that guy. I hope he rots. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just one of the many insane stories from working in a mortuary. There's other great hits like the funeral, a funeral director faking his death for insurance money. Whoa. A shootout during a funeral service. Whoa. A murder confession in front of the casket of a loved one. Yes. A supervisor I knew embalming the body of a serial killer and many more. (laughs) I can't wait to see you guys in Sacramento this month. Stay sexy and don't try to cremate your mother to hide the fact that you murdered her. Sincerely, your friendly neighborhood mortician. <laughs> thank you so much. And yeah. First of all, Mortician, thank you for being so friendly. Mm-hmm. Thanks for being in our neighborhood. Thanks for knowing that we would want weird stories like that. Oh my God. Just talk about someone that needs to start a podcast. Oh, well, there's the, the chick I follow on Instagram called The Good Death, Caitlin Doherty. She's like the like pro death death positive mortician oh yeah and she just wrote a book and she just seems fucking cool now when you say death positive you mean like she's not she's just like it happens it's natural and there's people who want to die and they should be able to die no i think it's like it's we shouldn't be ter- i don't i'm not i can't speak for her but we shouldn't be terrified of it people have questions people want to know what happened i, I don't know she oh so it's more like be ch- a little chiller about dying yeah it's kind of like let's talk about it so we're not all fucking terrified of it i'm 100 percent for that and she's like goth and cool and shit and she's a mortician i don't know nice. i like her i love it i'm picturing kind of an elvira situation <laughs> And that's hot. Okay. This, the subject line is Zodiac connection and spying on the neighbors. Um, Salutations. I grew up in South San Francisco, California, about 45 minutes from Karen. I too hate Sacramento. (laughs) Oh no. I do not hate Sacramento. (laughs) Uh. I should have, I should have, uh, Edited that out. Um, I'm gonna. I am gonna write a love letter, love letter to Sacramento and read it when we do our show there. Yeah, absolutely should. Uh, okay, I should have pre-read that. My mom was about ten when the Zodiac was terrorizing mm. the Bay Area. My mom casually mentioned one day that the girl across the street was shot by the Zodiac. I'm sorry. What? what? My mom is not a murderino and could care less about this. Oh my god. I don't have a lot of details, but my. Nino, uncle, told me that she was shot in the stomach at UCSF (gasps) and was either a freshman or a sophomore. She was only in the hospital for a week and made a full recovery. Obviously, the neighborhood lost their minds. Yeah. As this was the 60s and everyone was super tight. (laughs) (laughs) Nino said the neighborhood... And the city went on fucking lockdown and no one could go anywhere. He also um, mentioned coming home at 2 a.m. when Richard Ramirez was on his SF tour to an unlocked door. Oh, no. They knew he was in the city and they still left the front door unlocked. Uh, what the fuck? Nana and Papa get it together. <laughs> Uh, since we're sharing random stories, <laughs> well, <laughs> you are. Since we're sharing random stories, I basically lived at my grandparents' house growing up. 
Um, and when I was little, maybe three or four, I heard a lot going out on outside. I peeked through the wooden plantation shutters. Why were those a thing? <laughs> <laughs> and watched as my neighbor's son was being taken away in handcuffs and tidy whities <gasps> followed shortly by his brother being taken out on a gurney with, and this is in all caps, a fork sticking out of his stomach. <laughs> no, take the fork out. <laughs> Between the Zodiac and the crazy neighbors next door, I was destined to become a murderino, <laughs> SSDGM, Angie. That's amazing. How hilarious that is was that? That was a good one. Since that was we're like sharing a, stories. Yeah, it was a, um, what do you, it was like a compilation. Yeah, letter. yeah. Like, let me just add this in. I've got a couple. Well, I have a little Zodiac one too, but I also, or I could do a close called GSK one. Oh, which I'll, I guess we got to do. Those all sound good. Okay. How do you choose? I choose the one that Elvis is not directly putting his asshole on <laughs> currently. Um, okay. This is called First Hand GSK Close Call. Karen, Georgia, Steven, and mascots. Hi. Nice. That's good. <laughs> mascots is good. I'm a big fan coming at you from Karen's favorite place, <laughs> the armpit of California, <laughs> Sacramento. Oops. I should have edited that out too. <laughs> oh, man. I moved up here last summer from the Bay Area and settled in Rancho Cordova. Oh, yes. Mm. Lovely place. Uh, if I ever hear that anyone grew up in this area, I ask them if they remember what it was like when the East Area Rapist was on the loose. And that's why we're so fun at parties, isn't that's it? Right. It's because we just ask people about shit like that. We go right to the heart of uh -huh. what... Uh, um, do you have any deep-seated fears? Yeah. Or when someone's like, that freaks you out? I'm from Cincinnati. I'm like, oh, do you know about the... No. Yeah. That's stupid. Did you know about the... They put chili on spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> and you, cinnamon, I Yeah, think? I'll either ask about their food or their killers. <laughs> cinnamon. Uh, here is the most amazing and terrifying first-hand story I've heard. One of my coworkers was in high school in the 70s and lived in Rancho Cordova in a neighborhood where the Golden State Killer hit three times. She didn't know it at the time. Let's call her Kathy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she started the story by saying, I don't think it was the East Area Rapist, but this really weird thing happened during that time. One evening, her parents went to a party and left her and her younger brother home. They were watching a movie together when her brother decided to go to bed. His bedroom was near the front door, so when Kathy kept hearing weird noises from that direction, she assumed he was doing something in his room. After about 20 minutes of these sounds, she decided to go investigate. As she walked down the hall toward her brother's room, Kathy heard the noise again and looked toward the front door, only to realize the handle was jiggling and someone was trying to get in. Oh my god. She freaked out and woke her brother up. They ran uh, into their parents' room, barricaded the door, loaded the gun, nice. <laughs> called their parents, and then it says in parentheses, why not 911? <laughs> <laughs> her parents called the police and they came over. Kathy remembers that the cops showed up way more quickly than she expected and as they sat her down they told her to be ca very careful because quote concerning things had been happening in her neighborhood when she asked if they found anything the officers mentioned that the front door handle was almost off and oh. there was a screwdriver and a flashlight left in the bushes on their porch at this point in her story as someone who has been studying GSK my mouth dropped open and I screamed that was him that was the Golden State Killer <laughs> until a few months ago Kathy had no idea that she was very likely a potential GSK victim and a Screw, as a screwdriver and flashlight were some of his favorite tools. But mm -hmm. I'm also like, yeah, that's what everyone's favorite break-in tools If are. it's nighttime and you're trying to undo a front door, you kind of have no choice but to go screwdriver flashlight. Right. That's true. So I mean, you could do... Uh, what else could there a candle you could do a candle hatchet. and dynamite <laughs> <laughs> Just that seems a like a great <laughs> duo what, what did he do what was his mo a uh, candle and dynamite a candle and dynamite like an old miner <laughs> that hadn't been there for 50 years can't wait to see you in sacramento on october 26th thanks for reminding us uh <laughs> and then it, it says Colby, and then in parentheses, female. <laughs> <laughs> Colby! Female Colby, thank you! Oh, that's, that's so creepy. I know. Oh, So creepy. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, 
just food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. Okay, the subject line of this is my grandpa is crazier than your grandpa. Mm. Hi. In the, in the 1940s, my grandpa was a self-described hobo. He used to hitchhike and ride around on trains looking for work uh, during the school year when he was a teenager. That sounds like so much fun. I mean, that's the life. And then he would come back to his parents' house during the summer to look um, out af- to look after his little brother, Gary. Every year, Gary would ask if he could go along. And when he turned thir- 12 or 13, my grandpa finally agreed to take him. Can we just talk about babies named Gary real quick? <laughs> I just want to take a fucking moment to let everyone know that there was like a child named Gary at one point in his life. Like a seven year old, like, it's me, Gary. I just want to go on the train with you. <laughs> Gary. Can I come on, Gary? <laughs> it's me, Gary. <laughs> Stop it, Gary. Honey, ba- the, will you help the baby? Gary's crying. <laughs> baby, will you change Gary's will diaper? Will you change Gary's <laughs> diaper? <laughs> Gary spit up again. <laughs> He's, uh, Gary has a briefcase. He's only four. <laughs> but His Gary, diapers are in his briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, you just do the basics. Gary's got all the... All the all the equipment. Uh, okay, go on with baby Gary. Okay, baby Gary <laughs> gets to go because it's so long ago. It was the 40s. Right. That 13, it, it says, my grandpa finally agreed to take him. 13 is basically an adult, right? <laughs> so I actually just started talking through the end of that paragraph yeah. instead of just reading it. So they're leaving their hometown of Walla Walla, Washington, by the way of hitchhiking. They get picked up and my grandpa is quietly sitting in the back seat. Well, Gary is making conversation with the driver. Gary, 13. Gary is just working the driver. At this point, I should mention two things. My grandpa is quiet and salty, and he refuses to comment on the story. Oh, I love him. <laughs> Gary is the only one who will talk about it. Spoiler alert, they both survive. Okay. So this guy is driving, and he takes an unexpected turn. Mm-mm. Gary says something about it, and the guy doesn't respond. Then Gary goes, seriously, mister? Seriously, mister? <laughs> You're headed down the wrong way. <laughs> and the man tells Gary, shut the fuck up, <gasps> and turns down a forested road toward the mountains. After another minute or two, Gary asks the man to let them out. <gasps> and the guy produces a pistol, points it at Gary, and says, you'll get out when I say you'll get out. Oh, no. At which point, Gary hears a click from the back of the car. My grandpa is pointing a gun at the man. Holy shit. And then it just says in quotes, in quotation, no, I think we'll get out here. <gasps> Believe it or not, the guy was convinced and he let them go. Oh, Gary decided the hobo life wasn't for him. And to this day, granddad won't tell anyone where he got the gun. SSDGM, Casey Jane. P.S. Looking forward to seeing you in San Francisco this October. What about this for a fucking twister? Yes. What if Gary, what's the da- grandpa's name? It just says grandpa. What if grandpa teenage grandpa did it on purpose to scare Gary from ever coming again. <gasps> yes. Right? Oh my God. And then Gary's like, I want to go back home and grandpa's like, <laughs> well, teenage grandpa, I'm teenage grandpa. I got to get go on my own, Gary. And the friend that's like, I'm scary random man <laughs> yeah. uh, from, oh, from the car. There's problems because like, why does teenage grandpa know this creepy old man? Anyway, but that's not where I mean, that's just, the hobo life. That's They're a, not yeah. ageist. You, you know, can, people, you have friends. You can start young. You can end old. You can do it, do it however you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that the grandpa won't comment on it. I know. You got to have a gun with you if you're going to be a, like a fucking traveling hobo. You got to have a piece or a switchblade. You get it. Absolutely. Gotta, and also how smart of him to sit in the back seat. Yeah. It's like, whatever happens here. Also, Gary's just totally a front seat bait. Chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, why don't you go ahead and go up and go sit up there? sit next to the old man. Pepper him with questions. <laughs> See what he, how he responds. <laughs> well, that was amazing. Oh, another batch of great ones. Oh, guys, please send us your fucking stories because we love reading them to you. They're the best. And God damn it, Sacramento, I can't wait to come and apologize to you. 
<laughs> the apology tour. <laughs> you should come out with a scarlet letter A and uh, just apology on your yeah, dress. A scarlet letter S. Sorry, Sacramento. Sorry, Sacramento tour. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, stay sexy, everybody. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know that one.